Jeffrey. Well, hello, Naomi. It is wonderful to be back here reviewing more films, and、what? the film we've chosen tonight is Hunger Games. Can you imagine that we both saw it what within the day of each other without、mm-hmm. without any coordination, which which is a、ah. sort of a, a hiking point, right? It's like a spontaneous thing. <laughs> Emergent order. <laughs> Emergent order. So <laughs> I I absolutely went nuts for this, and I, I I quickly banged out a review like within 15 minutes afterwards.、Um, to me, the great message of the film was. Uh, don't enter into a violent revolution lightly. It was it was a really interesting film because the whole time you really want to root for the rebels, right?、Uh, you want them to crush this awful, you know, dictatorship.、Um, but you know, it had some really uneasy overtones、uh, when you're talking about the the rebel rebels and they have their own sort of dictator. Tell me a little bit about your experience. That with was that. exactly it. I wanted to root for the rebels, and of course, in the last two films, we did. Right? It was just it was、yep. nonstop fun. Yay! Stand up to、uh-huh. the bad guy and all the rest of it. Um, yeah, but then once you discover these bunker people, they didn't seem that much better than the people above ground.、Mm-hmm. They're, they're all in these kind of Maoist-style、uh, military uniforms,、uh, marching around, regimented according to a very strict structure. There's this, this peculiar、uh, president who seems like the female version of President Snow in some way, <laughs> you know. And you're growing increasingly suspicious of her, you know. And one of the、yeah. things I, th- I think we like about Katniss is that she was a reluctant recruit into the rebel army. She's forced, you know, put in a position where she has to fight back violently,、uh, but she really doesn't like it,、um, and that is a that is a great theme of this movie that I really liked. I、uh, thought Julianne Moore was fantastic, and she was a little bit creepy, right? She was creepy,、bit. and、uh, I mean they had prohibition in this、uh, underground bunker, much to the dismay of Woody Harrelson. That's right.、Um, it. It was just a, a society where、um, you had to get permission to do anything, and sure, they were in dangerous times and they were under attack. But isn't that how all awful dictatorships start,、um, where you're protecting yourselves against some threat, and so it's wartime, and so you hand off a whole lot of your freedom to someone else in order to protect yourselves? It's just.、Um, and then, and then she's taking credit for everything, right? I mean, so suddenly she's、yeah. standing up, making these big speeches. I authorized an attack. And it worked! Yay! I'm trying fabulous, you know. And it's like, oh God, that's all we need is another big, big shot leader in this world. You know? Yeah. And I really、disgusting. liked that Katniss sort of shied away from that. She was told, "Yeah, come forward, hold my hand, we'll do this together." But she, Katniss, couldn't handle it, and she sort of retreated back into the shadows because she doesn't want to be this hero of this huge movement and move. You know, she just, she just wants to be left alone. She just wants peace.、Uh, she just doesn't want people telling her what to do, and she doesn't want this false pretense. Of、um, war is glorious. We're doing this wonderful thing because、well, it's not glorious. Yeah, and and that's the thing that's interesting about this. If you, if you enter into the Hunger Games series hoping to experience something like like a libertarian fantasy of, of people rising up violently against the government, and overthrowing and seeing justice served, this film is an interesting corrective to that, and I think a、yeah. very realistic one. Because if you look back at the history of revolution, they hardly ever, actually ever, never turn out well.、Um, you know, the French Revolution is an obvious case. The Russian Revolution twice now. You know,、uh, we've seen revolutions go bad. It's very difficult, actually, to discern the difference between a, a genuine revolution and a coup d'état. And even in the case of the American Revolution, you know, we replaced、uh, King George with President George, and taxes were higher 25 years after the revolution than they ever were before. And we had speech controls; you couldn't criticize the president without going to jail. So, you know,、uh, revolution is is, is 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 not always a good thing. There's a power vacuum that someone then comes in and fills.、Um, what happens with Agorism or some other method of, of peaceful revolution,、right. where you just find alternative means. You know, your book、um, "Bourbon for Breakfast" is a great example of how we can peacefully rebel. You find these little things that you can do、oh, uh, just、you. to reclaim your freedom. You don't、right. need to violently uprise and join together, and then find a leader, and then have one leader battles the other leader in this awesome, you know, heroic video game match. <laughs> exactly.、Um, it is just about well, no, I just don't want to be told what to do. They're they're telling me what to do. Here, so I'll just 
I'll just not do it. I'll find these other ways to get around that. I like the idea of micro-revolution. You know, the state was built bit by bit, and we're probably going to have to dismantle it bit by bit. Can I say something about the economics of Hunger Games? It's a little puzzling. Mm -hmm. there, se there seems to be a kind of model that the capital, which is elaborate and, and, and fabulous in every way, is living off the, the labors of, of all the districts. But it's hard to understand exactly um, how this works. I mean, cutting trees doesn't uh, build a, a city on the size and scale of, of the, the capital. Um, in fact, I think, um, you know, in, in the real capitalist world, the, the, the process uh, is exactly the reverse. It's like, this, like the, the, the highly capitalized cities are subsidizing, you know, everywhere else, at least working in cooperation with them. But Hunger Games seems to have this kind of pure transfer model of wealth accumulation. And right. uh, it, I, I don't know if it's Marxian, really, but it just it's... seems unrealistic in some way. Yeah, it was interesting because all of the districts are very um, specialized. They all have the area of expertise. Right. And yet the government is quite happy to kill off an entire district and then kill off another entire district. I mean, if you were mm. if you were actually living in that sort of a, a world and suddenly it's like all the people who collected food suddenly disappeared. It's like, well, we're, we've got a problem here. Suddenly oh, we don't have a, food. It's a good um, point. And then, and a district, like you said, with the highly um, capitalized, very luxurious, ostentatious capital, um, you have, I mean, you don't see any builders there, but someone built the buildings. You Clearly, these people who are just living this life of luxury and eating and then you're know, drinking things to make themselves throw up and then eating more, you know, they're not doing the building and yet you don't see anyone from any of the other districts, you know, going in there and building things. And I think that's a misrepresentation of... of um, how wealth is created. It's created by all different levels of society working together in the same place because all different roles are needed, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, by separating all of these things out into completely different districts, it doesn't allow that integration There's of no real different trade. skill sets. Yeah, you couldn't possibly build a city like that on this economic model. There's somebody yeah. else that struck me as slightly, and I'm really curious whether you agree with this or not, but, you know, um, in, in this film we saw a picture of a, an incredibly stable government that's able to withstand, you know, a vast amount of, of rebellion at all levels. I mean, like intense and bombings and civilian resistance and, and it just is like a pure top-down, we're in charge because we have the most weapons uh, kind mm -hmm. of model of government. I, I think that's a little bit unrealistic. I, I think in the real world, the government would have collapsed a, a long time ago, like by now, you know? Uh, I just don't think that governments can hold on to their power through sheer use of violence exclusively. They have to seek a kind of consent of the government, go uh, governed. Well, I mean, look at North Korea. That's a very violent society that is ruled entirely by intimidation and fear. Yep. I mean, North Korea is the last uh, sort of stronghold of that sort of a system, and we have seen it collapse over the rest of the world. So I would be interested to see what happens yeah. uh, with North Korea. Um, and it's interesting that they use sort of parallel models of um, ensuring the security. So North Korea is like such an incredible propaganda machine. When you have refugees fleeing that country and you try to re-educate them, they've com been completely brainwashed. And it's, uh, it's very difficult for them to get a real grip on reality because of the propaganda, because of the brainwashing. And what you see in mm. Hunger Games is incredible propaganda really setting up who's the good guy, who's the bad guy. Uh, and their whole machine is the media. It's this wonderful, um, uh, fun, uh, frivolous character of that talk show host, you know, who just finds everything exciting. Yeah, no, he's um, wonderful, isn't he? He's, yeah. he's fun. Well, you, Naomi, as much as you love media, I, I found in this newest film, there was this really strong emphasis on the role of media. So, like, nothing happens without having the filmmakers around and the uh, audio yeah. mixers. And, the, and was That's that cool for you to sides. watch that? Yeah, on both sides. Did, was that fun for you to see, like, what an integral role filmmakers had? It was really interesting had? because um, even in the Rebels grounds, you know, you had people saying, like, yeah, do that again. Do it directly to the camera. Do it with passion, to, you know. <laughs> and in the end, they had to actually put her in the field to get that authenticity. Um, it's like, that they're, like really... they're making YouTubes or something like that. Yeah, I, that's I had that feeling. You had, yeah, you noticed it. Just, it's a little bit mind-blowing that when you're dealing with a world where all of this incredible violence is going on and they're worried about whether you're emoting enough to the camera. Is it reading? You know, is that going to be... Uh, but 
you know what? It is a reflection of how powerful media is. Yeah. And we shouldn't take it lightly. We should not dismiss it as this frivolous thing that we consider. I mean, we associate media with let's watch some more cat videos. Let's go to the next yeah. Marvel film. Let's watch Hunger Games at the cinema. Um, but really, media is an incredibly powerful tool that should not be dismissed. And the fact that even in this war zone, they're taking it so seriously because they know that it's these propaganda films that will end up, you know, um, inspiring people to rise up. They took the media very seriously, and I think we need to too. Yeah. And I think that we I, need I, to think more about how we use the media. I was thinking about you doing those scenes when they would just shoot the, the stuff and then put the, the, the header on it and then the, the, the trailer <laughs> and, like, frame yeah. it up with the great music. I was thinking Naomi would love this. So I'm so <laughs> pleased that you saw it. Yeah. yeah, I love the first one that they did when um, they had all the green screen in the background and she's like, come <laughs> on and fight. Uh, freedom is great. You know, and I'm uh, sort of watching it and I'm like, oh, yeah, I've been there. I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I thought those scenes were, were very fun as well. Oh, and for me personally, too, I mean, this idea of not being scripted, you know, I, I've, I've tried so many times to do scripted things, and yeah. it never works for me. It was like when I spoke at the at the MPI recently, you know, yeah, we had the yeah, rehearsal, yeah. and I just walked up and I thought, I'm not going to say a word, because whatever uh -huh. I say is going to be different from what I actually really say. I can't yeah. be scripted. I, you know. So I know you're looking forward to the next one. I am too. I don't want I it know. to end, right? I don't want it to end. I think we all yeah. kind of know because we have friends who've read all the books and maybe we've read the books ourselves. Uh, don't, but... don't tell me. I don't know anything. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. <laughs> Actually, to be honest, I didn't see number two until the uh... night that I saw number three. Oh. So I had a giant marathon. So in my head, I'm actually a little confused as to where number two ends and number three begins because it was just one giant it's Hunger Games so experience. Brilliant, Best night it? ever. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Tip top, <laughs> number one. Cool. Yeah. Well, if anyone hasn't seen it, um, would, would you encourage them to go see it, Jeffrey? I, I would. Oh, immediately. I think it's yeah. just so brilliant. Not just as a, as a, you know, a case against the government, which obviously it is, but as a, as a, as a caution to how to go about our, our reform efforts, you know, with <laughs> intelligence and, and wisdom and, and peace above all else. Yeah. It was wonderful chatting with you, Jeffrey. You too, Naomi. Wonderful okay. to see you. Night, night. <laughs>